Today I would like to speak to you how to come out of these lustful tendencies. So how do we get out of this problem of lust? So one by one we will find out every possible ways to get rid of the spirit of lust from us. Normally the spirit of lust first enters through the door. We have five doors for our body. The five doors are nothing but the five senses. So, so through all the five senses, mostly through the sense of sight, eyesight, through the eyes, and all the through five senses, this spirit of lust. For that matter, every, every spirit, they enters inside. So first they go, once they enter inside through this door, the eyesight, hearing, and the, through our words, and uh, touch, senses, all these senses, taste, we, these temptations, the evil one, the spirit will enter inside of us. Once he enters inside, it goes first, affects our mind. The first place where he gathers together, he stays together and start influencing the spirit, the evil one, the, when he gets inside of our body, the first place where it will influence is our mind. For example, in the Garden of, uh, Garden of Eden, in the paradise, the serpent made Eve to see the fruit. And then she found the fruit is very good, attractive. See, through the senses, the desire entered inside the mind. And he started suggesting something in, his, in her mind. Did God say this? Okay, if you think God said, then God is lying. You know, you will not die. That is wrong. The word of God which God said is wrong. But what I am trying to say is the truth. See, he is giving some suggestions. The devil is giving some suggestion. To the mind of Eve, then Eve fell into the sin. So through the door of our body, five doors, the evil one get inside of our mind. From the mind, it goes to our body, mind controls our body and then body fall into sin. So this is how every sin. So that is why we re also read from the Bible, the mind is the root place. From mind, all the sin starts from the mind. So we need to check two things. First, we have to put guards. We have to put guards on every door. We have to protect our, all our doors. The five doors that we have, we have to protect it, wash it, cleanse it. Then we have to cleanse our mind. And then automatically it will influence our actions let us read job chapter 31 verse 1 book of job chapter 31 verse 1 we read like this i have made a covenant with my eyes see he has already kept a guard in his one of the doors of his body that is the eyesight one of the five doors of the body he kept a guard on his uh, in front of the door of his eyes how then I could I look upon a virgin? So if your eyes are guarded, you will not see anything unholy. You will only see what is good. You know, sometimes, some people when they go on the main road, maybe they may go to the big city. So some people say, wherever I look, only dirty pictures. But some people, they don't see any of those dirty pictures. So, depends on what you entertain in your eyes. If your eyes do not have any guard, then wherever you go, whoever looks, whomever you look, you will only see dirty things. There may be so many posters on the roadside, but your eyes will catch only dirty pictures. 
so many people are well dressed but your ca- eyes will catch only the one who would uh, have hardly dressed so because what your eyes is interested the eyes will search for if you have kept a guard for your eye you will only see goodness in this world so it's also depends on the grace when adam and eve before the fall of their sin fall they looked at everything and said this is paradise but after the fall they looked around and said we lost paradise but in fact they are in the same place before the before the fall the eyes were protected but after the fall eyes is defiled their eyes are defiled no more protection for the eyes therefore they see only negatives so they said we lost paradise before the fall they were protected by the grace of god therefore they saw everything as paradise so this is one thing that we need to remember through all these senses the evil one get inside of us no evil can get inside of you forcefully without your permission no evil can enter inside of you without your permission the same way god also doesn't enter inside of you without your permission now every sin every tendency to sin is a permission for the devil each time when you commit a sin you are opening your door wide and say welcome so he come inside once he come inside then he doesn't ask any permission from you for anything once he is inside he will control he will take control of everything of yours so this is how the devil works that is why i said the moment the devil evil one come inside of you through the five senses he goes straight to the mind and then from mind to every part of our body he will start controlling us first he will influence the mind we read sirach 37 verse 17 and 18 sirach 37 verse 17 and 18 we read like this the word of god says sirach 37 was 17 and 18 the mind is the root of all contact mind is the root of all contact it sprouts four branches good evil life death and it is the tongue that continually rules them mind is the root of all contact from the mind everything comes out the mind is the root of all contact good and bad life and death everything comes out and the tongue is the spokesperson of the mind so how do you know what is in your mind you just listen to somebody who talks to you for 5 minutes some people if you speak to them they will speak always negative things oh everyone is fake all are frauds are good for nothing and no one will be successful you know only negative things you can see here because his mind is full of negatives some people who, the moment they open their mouth they start gossiping against certain kind of people maybe some people against god and religion and go, and the uh, uh, priest and everyone they just go on speaking because that is what is there inside of their mind all the negativities and negative informations so is very important for some people they only speak good things so your family some children even young children i've seen many children even small children using swearing words because this is what they have seen from their family maybe husband wife fighting with each other and using swearing words and children even if they don't know the main meaning of it they start using it but i've seen many children who do not want to use and they are they, they know this bad word they will never touch it they will never speak about it because that's how they are treated and trained in their families so my dear brothers and sisters this is very important what you feed in your mind that is what is going to come 
in your mouth how you treat how you uh, train your five doors how you feed your five doors what are the things which you permit to come inside through your five doors that will come out through your mouth praise the lord so this is one thing that we need to remember my dear brothers and sisters now let me in a small way evaluate our mind the the way the mind works then you will understand it i'm not an expert about all these psychological things but what i understand let me share with you maybe something may be wrong but almost 75 percentage is it seems to be right so my dear brothers and sisters our mind has got three sections our mind is created with three sections conscious mind subconscious mind unconscious mind i think this is true so conscious mind subconscious mind unconscious mind and many teachings many scholars say only 10 percentage of the things are there in the conscious mind around 10 maybe it may be varying for one person to another but 10 percentage in the conscious mind around 30 percentage in the subconscious mind and 60 percentage in the unconscious mind that means we don't remember almost 60 percentage of the things that happened in our life not only the things the taste the sound the touch the sight beauty and then the smell all these five senses all these five things of everything is stored 10 percentage in the conscious mind 30 percentage in the subconscious mind 60 percentage in the unconscious mind so which are the things which are in the conscious mind whatever that is so precious for you more important for you it will be in your conscious mind for example what you ate today in the afternoon for lunch some people even what you ate last month uh, uh, afternoon you will remember it because that is very special for them so what is so special will be there in the conscious mind the least important lesser important will be in your subconscious mind for some people your mobile phone of course your mobile phone number will be in your conscious mind maybe your girlfriend's or boyfriend's number also will be in the conscious mind but if i ask you what about your mother's phone number father's phone number maybe it must have already gone to the unconscious or maybe some people subconscious mind if it is in subconscious mind thank god so so this is how we keep our things in our subconscious mind conscious mind unconscious mind almost your name your address your friends names your close friends names everything is in the conscious mind maybe your childhood's friends if they are very close to you they will be in the conscious mind some of them are not so close to you and those names you have already forgotten that means you have pushed those names to the subconscious mind if you get some clue some clue here and there then suddenly it pops up to this conscious mind and you will be able to tell them tell the names of those people but some informations are completely in the unconscious mind if you ask do you know do you remember these people you will say no i don't remember you will try your best to remember but you won't remember that means it is gone completely into the unconscious mind but if you remind if you are reminded about a special very particular clue then suddenly remember if it will come back to the conscious mind i remember one day in during a retreat sent retreat in in divan retreat center there was a religious nun who was helping us in that retreat center and then one girl who attended the retreat she happened to see this religious nun standing there she came running she's grown up now and she came running to the sister the religious nun and said sister do you remember me this sister has become very old and now she is doing some ministry by because she is is a retirement time for her she used to teach in a, con, a college uh, and school so 
now she is retired and now she is helping in our retreat center and spiritual things and all so she this religious nun was standing there this girl came running to the sister and said sister do you remember me then sister looked at her and she could not remember she said i'm sorry i don't remember then this girl tried to say she, she said sister you taught me in the school you taught me many years then sister said what's your name then sister this girl said her name and she said sister said i have i remember so many of these names the same name so many people so she could not remember exactly who she is and then she said her many things about the incidents but sister could not remember then at the end this girl said sister you used to call me kuku kuku was her pet name so this is how she was called among her friends and then suddenly sister remembered because it was the sister who gave this her gave her this name so suddenly then this name was she remembered the, the moment this name was told then this sister remembered everything and sister said oh now i remember you you have one brother your father was sick and your mother was working so all the details she start, started sharing with her and she was shocked and what does it mean it means every information about this girl some years ago sister knew it very well but afterwards as the years passed by she started putting all this information to the unconscious mind and now she had completely forgotten though she was forgotten but it is not deleted it is there in the unconscious mind but when she got a clue all what was in the unconscious mind came to the conscious mind not only the memory came back to the conscious mind even emotions came back to the conscious body and then the sister was so affectionate she came and hugged her and kissed her and said it's so long years so many years we have not met i'm so happy that i met you and sister was so happy she was emotionally moved and she showed her affection to this girl my dear brothers and sisters this is the power of our mind your mind is the most powerful computer which no human being could ever make or will never will never make even in the computer if you delete something there are softwares to bring it back nothing can be permanently deleted from the computer it can be recovered the same way the mind anything that enters inside of your mind will never be deleted even if you think you forgot it will never be forgotten it cannot be deleted it is there in your mind it is there in your unconscious mind you may not be remembering it but if you want it will come back it will pop up any time just like sometimes in the computer many things pops up the same way all the hidden things in our unconscious mind it will pop up that's why some people say father suddenly where the moment i start a praying i suddenly started remembering certain incident that happened when i was very small it's popping up so what you feed in your mind that is what will be popping up almost all the time if you are addict for example i remember one day one of my friends who had an accident and then both husband and wife both had an accident but husband was saved but wife was uh, affect uh, she had some fractures here and there in her body and she was admitted in the hospital so i was in the seminary i visited them in the hospital so when i went to the the room the, in the hospital room this lady was lying down the husband was there standing and i was sitting next to her and i was talking to her then i found husband had only here and there some scratches scratches that's all but for wife her this nose this this was broken and hand collar bone was broken and hand was broken and some here and there some wounds and she was lying down and having pain and when when we were talking she was at least she was smiling and talking 
and then suddenly husband brought me some photographs the photographs of our their accident they showed me uh, in a ipad they showed me the accident scene the way the car was completely destroyed it was a horrible si sign horrible si scene so i was just looking at these photos and this lady was lying down then suddenly i showed her see your car and look at your car and i just showed that that car the the broken car then suddenly husband said uh, and the moment she saw the picture of this accident scene and the car she screamed and became unconscious and then the husband came running father don't show her if you if you show her if you if she sees that she will un become unconscious i said you should have told me earlier she is already unconscious and then after some time she came back to the conscious and then somehow i managed to escape from there before she falls again but anyway after so many years i met them and i met this husband and i said how is she now then he said she is perfectly fine but one problem if she happens to see see any accident in any, any video maybe in the tv or in a movie or anywhere any accident scene then suddenly she screams and faints because that memory comes back to her mind the moment she any accident comes and maybe some even in when she travels if there is somebody very any car comes against them from opposite very fast then she close eyes and screams like this because the fear has entered all the memory comes back to her mind when the memory comes back even feeling come back because when she experienced that accident she was so frightened the fear overwhelmed controlled her and she became unconscious the same way when she watches the same kind of pictures the same fear comes memories comes and the fear also comes my dear brothers and sisters that is how the mind works suppose if you were so fond of some beautiful movies which you watched when you were small ch children now for example any scene from that movie or maybe some songs of that movie if you happen to hear it after so many years all your memories will go back to those small years when you were small i remember once i happened to go home and i was traveling in a bus and in the bus there was a movie song which was played and then remember i remembered this was the movie i which i watched when i was in the fourth standard all me maybe around 9 or 10 years old i remember that movie i watched with all my friends and the, all the memories came back to me even the same feelings came back you know as small children we used to move around we used to enjoy all those memories came back to me the moment i started hearing this song after so many years the music has got the power to take you back or bring back the past to present that is why some people are so fond of music certain music certain types of music because it unknowingly or knowingly brings back some memories i remember one boy who is addicted to only one song he 24 hours is going on listening to this song is going on listening to one song and then his parents brought him to the retreat center and i was talking to him and i asked him what is special with this song it was a romantic song and i said there are so many romantic songs why do you fix only this one then he said he he had a girlfriend and it was this girl and he fell in love with this girl because she was a very good singer and she used to sing this song she she sang this song in a public gathering of the school and that is when she he fell in love with her and then slowly made friendship with her and then they became very close friends but after some years when she found another person better than him she ditched him and then went and now he is broken and now he is getting satisfaction by remembering the old memories by listening to this music again and again and again he is living in the past now he can't accept that she has left him 
so he wants to live in the past some people they want to escape from facing the realities of today so they will go to another reality maybe in the reality of the movies they will create they themselves as one of the characters in the movie and they will fall in love with the film stars and and actresses and they will be always in another world because they don't want to live in the present world because the present world is so frightening for them many people they fall into addiction of alcohol and drugs because they want to escape from this world so alcohol or any other addiction so addiction to movies addiction to drugs and drinks are nothing but escapism from facing the realities of life because they are you know if you check all those who are addicted to alcohol or of this uh, drugs and all they are weak people very weak people so why they depend on this alcohol and all those things because they can't they don't have the stamina or they don't have the power to face the realities of their life the will power to face the realities of their life so they are trying to escape from facing it by falling into wrong things okay anyway so this is how our mind works everything all the experiences are stored in your mind suppose a man who is always watching pornography dirty videos always watching dirty videos initially the moment you watch it will be in the subconscious mind after some time maybe after some days just like any movie any anything that you experience initially it will be in the conscious mind after some time it will go to the subconscious mind and after some days it will go to the unconscious mind only if you want to remember you will it will it will come to your mind otherwise it won't come to your mind it will go to the unconscious mind when you watch it for the first time but if you are a frequent person frequently watching it you know what happens lots of these kinds of movies will be in the conscious mind and then many of it will be filled with the in the subconscious mind and your even your unconscious mind also will be filled with all these kinds of informations different scenes different videos different uh, videos will be stored in the unconscious mind and then every now and then especially when you calm down maybe at night maybe when you pray maybe when you sit alone somewhere when you are alone in your home all these things which are in the unconscious mind will pop up if you are very active in doing something you may not remember these things but the moment you calm down the moment you are alone the moment you want to uh, take rest these thoughts pictures videos everything will pop up in your conscious mind and then you will not be able to control yourself you will fall into the same sin again you will entertain something of this sort to satisfy that desire and even if you see another person not properly dressed suddenly that will instigate all the unconscious mind what is stored in the unconscious mind will come to the conscious mind and you won't be able to control yourself in front of that person and that is how many people abuse others they are not able to control themselves because the moment they see someone else maybe children maybe some other opposite sex or someone else whom they see the moment they see it will trigger what is there inside of the un- unconscious mind it will everything will come to the conscious mind and then not only the memory comes back to the conscious mind even emotion comes the lustful emotion it will control them and they will fall into abuses that's how almost all the abuses takes place sometime back in mumbai one journalist was abused raped and killed and three four people were caught and i was an indian i was watching those news and then one breaking news four of them were caught and another breaking news they had they admitted that they are addicted to pornography from childhood they were addicted to bad videos from childhood so what happened when they were addicted to bad videos from 
childhood all these bad medios are there in the conscious mind subconscious mind unconscious mind and one day when they happen to see a journalist alone in a lonely place they could not control themselves and they went and abused and destroyed my dear brothers and sisters therefore it is very important for us to be very careful and make sure that make sure to check what you see and what you hear and what you feed in your mind what you feed you will become that is why the children you know even small children those who are addicted to computer games what kind of games they are playing you have to be very careful some children are playing computer games of killing shooting and the head is broken and the blood is splashed and they are just very used to this and afterwards killing become an entertainment because as a small children their mind is trained in such a way that killing and murder and blood oozing out is not a problem for them their subconscious mind and unconscious mind is full of it every day they are doing the same my dear brothers and sisters in psychology this says suggestions you know 24 hour suggestions are negative the worldly suggestions are given dirty videos suggestions and then you will be made out of it you will become like that you won't be satisfied that person won't be satisfied with one wife or one husband no wonder breaking of relationships are very common so my dear brothers and sisters we have to be very careful about these things what we feed what we show what we eat our five senses should be guarded five senses should be guarded we have to consecrate our eyes if we have seen anything of unholy cleanse our eyes purify our eyes the lord will help you praise the lord if you have heard negatives gossip 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 negative things accusing blaming insulting attacking you know we have to cleanse our ears those who are evil inside wherever you go you will see evil the evil will follow you we read like this proverb chapter 11 verse 27 we read like this in the word of god proverbs 11:27 word of god says whoever diligently seeks good seeks favor but evil comes to one who search for it you know if you have if you have an addiction if suppose if you filled your mind with all the dirty pictures dirty videos dirty thoughts then you if you have a desire for evil tendencies you don't need to publish it in the newspaper saying i have a desire for evil the moment you go to a city those who are having the same desire will come to you without any publicity you will fall into make friendship with all those people i remember uh, i think i have mentioned somewhere sometime here sometime back in one of the talks we have a retreat for the youth the first day of the youth retreat every one was so mixed all of them are new and they are very silent very obedient have pin drop silence i was so happy oh very good children after one talk we gave them 15 minutes break and after 15 minutes break when we when the people came back we saw everyone change their seat they themselves we didn't change the seat we had kept the seats according to their number so that in case if anybody is absent we can easily know there is one person absent because one chair is empty so we have made everything in such a way but suddenly we notice everyone is changed the seat some good children are in the, in the front very obedient keeping the eyes closed this and listening and some naughty one cracking jokes in between sitting in the back and somewhere here and so many varieties of characters very easily identify easy you know to easy to pick pick 
different characters different personalities then we notice some cha some chairs are empty so i told the team members to go and check in all the rooms and see if anyone is absent they went to all the rooms and came back and said father there's nobody in the building then we have a long big huge land there almost 10 acres of land with so many varieties of trees fruits coconut tree mango tree jackfruit tree and so many trees so i told them to go and check in all these places they went to check all the trees and everywhere and they found all of them there one was on the jackfruit tree another one was our coconut tree another one was for mango tree and one by one they were caught and brought to our retreats but to us and they were standing in front of me or six seven of them so i knew they are from i one of the families or maybe the one same school or same village or something otherwise they can't go like this together so i asked them their names and details and their background and then after talking to them i came to know they have no connection at all between them so i asked them when did you get friends when did you become friends they said that 15 minutes break time so in the 15 minutes break time all the naughty children came together good children came together according to their character they made friendship with each other the spirit inside of me will get inspired by the get attracted to their the same spirit in another person i don't need to introduce the spirit will introduce and will drag me to that place that person i remember one day one person came to our retreat center and this man came to the retreat center because he was addicted to alcohol and he wanted to come out of it so i told him attend one retreat he attended a retreat and he said i'd give up he gave up then i said i want to make sure so you attend one more retreat don't go out and he didn't go for go out and he stayed one more retreat but still i was not convinced i said you attend one more retreat then he said father i don't have uh, paste and uh, some uh, you know toiletries so i said don't worry i will buy and give it to you then he said no father i want to go and buy i said i don't want you to go out if you go out i'm sure you will go and drink then he said father i have decided i will never touch it anymore then i said okay then you go but make sure that you come back very fast don't touch alcohol at all you have come somehow managed to get the strength so please make sure that you don't fall into the sin again he agreed and he said father i'm not going alone i am going with jesus and he took one bible one rosary in the hand and I, and he said i will go with this my god will protect me i was so happy and i said go ahead and he went you know those who of you have visited our tabor retreat center mumbai tabor bhavan from there if you want to go and buy something from the shop you need to get the bus and go to the city and buy the things and come back so he was walking saying hail mary holy mary prayer in one hand rosary another hand bible and he walked walked and he was standing there in a small junction where there are two three shops there was two three shops and he was standing there but he wanted to go to the city and buy the things so he was waiting for the bus and as he was waiting for the bus and he opened his and in between when he looked he saw in front of just opposite the other side of the road there was a shop wine shop the moment he saw this he had a temptation then he looked at the bible looked at the rosary and he started saying hail mary very fast because he knew he is in danger and he pressed the bible close to his heart and he closed his eyes so that he won't see that uh, the board again but in between he checked with one eye and said looked whether the board is still there and unfortunately board was still there and then he thought he was feeling so thirsty and then he thought okay i don't want to drink wine or anything of this alcohol i will go and have one glass of water and then anyway bus will be late and it's so scorching sun and then he decides to go there and then he asked for one glass of water and when he was sitting there he looked around and there were so many others who were drinking all varieties of colors and then 
suddenly he was thinking this is also water that is also water why can't i have get one small bottle from that water and then anyway he doesn't know what happened after some time he was fully drunk he didn't want to go from this play i mean he didn't want to go to the shop but at the end he ended up in this liquor shop and then he was fully drunk after some time when i was out standing outside the retreat said i saw one person coming on his four legs and then first i did not recognize but then i knew this is this man i said what happened to you and then he stood on his two legs and he said father and he was speaking some other language i didn't understand but somehow managed to understand he said father i don't know what happened then i looked at his hands there was no rosary no bible is missed somewhere and then he agreed father i drank then i said where did you get this because i knew he didn't have the, he didn't get the time to go to the city and come back so i asked him where did you get this then he said father there in that junction there is a wine shop then i was shocked because i was living in the retreat center for 5 years i passed through that road many every day two three times but i never saw a liquor shop this man who came for the retreat for the first time he didn't see any other shop but only one shop this is how the devil if you have this tendency one liquor shop will follow you wherever you if you go to heaven you will see find one there too that is why jesus said no drunkards will be permitted in heaven otherwise they will make a liquor shop there praise the lord so my dear brothers and sisters if you have a tendency like this wherever you go your sin will follow you sin will follow with a shop and we read numbers 32 23 we read it already but we'll read it again 32 23 we read but if you do not do this you have sinned against the lord be sure your sin will find you out you don't need to search for your sin it will come after you wherever you go your sin will follow you the moment you take a decision to stop alcohol then your friend will come and knock at the door this friend you never met in your lifetime you met when you were in the first standard in the nursery school and now he's coming introducing himself with a bottle all on a sudden he will appear because the devil knew he st- you stopped the alcohol and he will appoint someone to bring it this is equal for every other sin i have seen many people who stopped alcohol the moment they stop in the retreat center they are safe the moment they go out all their friends will come or threaten them also oh you have no courage and make fun of you somehow will make you within one or two weeks or within one or two days will make you drink again this is about alcohol and alcoholism but even about other sins too the same thing happens if you are addicted to some bad videos and you decided to stop it but the moment you search anything in your youtube or anything in your google all these things will come and then fall into temptations just for the curiosity kills the cat so my dear brothers and sisters this is how the devil works we read proverbs 30 verse 20 Proverbs 30 verse 20 we read like this This is the way of an adulteress she eats and wipes her mouth and says i have done no wrong those who are addicted to sin those who are you know affected completely by the sin after some time the sin is not a sin it's okay sacrament of marriage not needed even abortion though it is a murder the worst murder when you kill another person human being like you at least that person will defend but when you kill a baby in the womb the child cannot even defend 
and we go and kill and we don't have any sense of sin and legally even governments are blinded presidents and prime ministers are blinded and just pass the law and say you can kill no sense of sin because this is how the devil works this is the way of an adulteress she eats wipes her mouth and says i've done no wrong my dear brothers and sisters if your mind is brainwashed or your conscience is perverted then every sin will follow us from that you know just imagine if you get a prime minister or a president whose conscience is perverted that is why we need to pray for our leaders we need our church members to be involved in the politics the good people holy people obedient to the church and command of god should enter into the politics our church leaders should support them lead them because we need leaders who are guided by the holy spirit not by the perverted conscience they will pass many laws which are against divine law and at the end the whole country will be in a turmoil anarchy all the families will be affected maybe they may be able to give you benefits after benefits but if your family is already broken what are you going to do with your benefits drink and get drunk and destroy yourself some colonialism i have i was reading some books and in some one of the colonialism they do this go to a poor country and they have there is their original people who are there and take control of that country develop that country and we have everything and then suddenly the law of that country the newcomers who are controlling that country pass a law that they have to protect the original people there and they will pass so many benefits for this this original people what kind of benefits free money and alcohol and all kinds of freedom by doing so spoil them maximum make uh, make them addicted to alcohol and all these kinds of things and they will never develop money power everything is given to them but not education not anything of the sanctity of anything of goodness no good jobs but all these things benefits and they get addicted to drugs and drinks and all these things and spoil the generation after generations they will never develop that was one of the aim of colonialism this is exactly what happening in this world my dear brothers and sisters so what i'm trying to say is a mind should be purified mind should be made holy so what are we supposed to do we have to feed our mind with the good messages of god that is why we read psalm 119 verse 9 we read like this psalm 119 verse 9 we read like this the fear of the lord is pure enduring forever the 119 how can young people keep their way pure by guarding it according to your word the lord's word should be there in your mind fill your mind with the word of god if you fill your mind with the world word of your husband slowly you will divorce him if you keep your mind with the words of your wife slowly you will hate him hater and the same way if you feed your mind with the word of god you will start loving his love he will start understanding him if you keep the words of this world most of the words are negative but the words of god are always positive every time when god comes he said do not be afraid do not be afraid even your mother may forget you i will not forget you father may forget you i will not forget you i will help you i will strengthen you i will uphold you with my victorious right hand so there are so many words like this fill your mind with all these words fill your mind with the parables of jesus fill your minds about the thoughts about jesus that is why we read 
second first, the first corinthian chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 we read like this first corinthian chapter 2 verse 2 first corinthian chapter 2 verse 2 for uh, saint paul says for i decided to know nothing among you except jesus christ and him crucified when saint paul was among the people he decided i don't want to watch any video i don't want to read any newspaper i don't want to hear any gossips i don't want to see anyone committing sin i just want to listen only about jesus christ i decided to know nothing among you except jesus christ and him crucified that is why saint paul was full of wisdom he had all the wisdom in the bible because his mind is so holy only he fed his mind with the word of god today people receive the messages from god do you want to see visions do you want to see messages hear the messages of god then fill your mind with the word of god and message of god always avoid all unnecessary informations which are not pertinent to your livelihood praise the lord so this is something that we need to do and then our mind will be purified and then we will be able to come out of the temptations of our flesh